acid rain. I hate this rain. It's causing the traffic to back up for miles. Well, I hate this traffic because it's helping turn this rain into acid rain. I heard that acid rain has really bad effects. Doesn't it cause cancer and brain damage and even Alzheimer's disease? It definitely can, but the major thing it does is cause breathing problems. The acid in the rain comes from smoke and gases that are given off by cars and factories. It's like riding your bike behind a bus that's showering you with its exhaust fumes. Oh, I was reading something about that the other day. It said there's too much sulfur in the air and that it's killing thousands of people every year. Yes, sulfur is the major element in factory and car exhaust. It combines with oxygen and nitrogen in the air to become the acid in acid rain. This stuff doesn't just kill us, you know. It also kills trees and lakes and animals. The acid soaks into the plants and animals so that anyone who eats the plants and animals is also eating the acid. This sounds terrible. What can people do to stop acid rain? One simple thing they could do is to use less energy. Another way to stop acid rain is to drive less, or at least carpool. Imagine if every car on this road had four people in it right now. There would be fewer cars and a lot less acid rain. The Weather Forecast Part 1 And now, over to Barry with our weather forecast for this weekend. How's it looking for this weekend, Barry? Speaking for myself, I know I'm looking forward to clear skies. The past two weeks have been even rainier than usual for Seattle. Well, Sue, residents of Seattle will be happy to hear that this rainy spell we've been having is finally coming to an end. Although we've seen occasional showers today, by tonight things should dry out and Friday morning should be clear and sunny. This fine weather should continue until the end of the weekend, with temperatures ranging from 55 to 75 degrees. So everyone can put away those umbrellas. Back to you, Sue. Thank you, Barry. On behalf of the Thursday 6 o'clock news team, we wish you a pleasant evening. Part 2 did you hear the weather report, Jenny? It looks like it'll be a clear weekend after all, so we won't have to cancel our trip to the lake. That's almost unbelievable. I'm really looking forward to getting out of the city and camping under the stars. But we'd better get our stuff ready tonight, Paul, if we're planning to leave tomorrow right after work. Yes, we'll need our tent, sleeping bags, camping stove, and a cooler for the drinks. What about food? Let's stop at a store and pick up some groceries on the way out. Sounds good. Well, we'd better get packing if we want to be ready to go by 5 p.m. tomorrow. Who invented that? What's so funny? I can't concentrate on my work if you keep laughing loudly like that. I'm sorry. It's just that I'm reading this article in Science Today magazine about some of the unusual things that people have invented. These inventions are incredible. Okay, tell me about some of these inventions, and let's see if I think they're as funny as you do. All right. The first one is a ladder for spiders, a thin, flexible rubber strip which attaches to the top edge of the bath. Ha! <laughs> I wonder how long it took someone to invent that. Another inventor has designed a portable seat that you wear on a belt around your waist. In this picture, it looks like a big plastic cushion. Well, that is very unusual. But who would want to walk around with a portable plastic seat hanging from their waist all the time? 
Another unusual invention is this one. Look, it's a car plate that indicates whether the driver is a man or a woman by using different colors on either side. There's one color for males and one for females. What's the point of that invention? The inventor says that other road users will change the way they behave. They will become more polite if they know a woman is driving, so there will be fewer car accidents. Huh, do you really think that will happen? That's completely unbelievable. Inches and centimeters. Hi, Julie. I'm trying to figure out the dimensions of this MP4 player I want to buy, but I'm having trouble converting these English measurements. You're really good at mathematics, aren't you? It says that the MP4 player is 3.6 inches tall and 2 inches wide, but what does that mean in centimeters? Well, according to my math book, 1 inch equals 2.54 centimeters, so to convert that, we need to multiply each English measurement by that number. Wait, I have a calculator in my pocket. Great! According to the calculator, that would make it 9.1 centimeters tall and, let's see, about 5 centimeters wide. So, its height is about 9 centimeters and its width is about 5 centimeters. But what about its weight? The website says that it weighs 3.6 ounces. We multiply 3.6 by 28.3, which is the equivalent in grams, and that converts to about 102 grams. All right, then. The MP4 player is about 9 centimeters tall and 5 centimeters wide and weighs about 102 grams. I thought it would have to have larger dimensions to be able to hold 5,000 songs, but it's small and light. Do you think I should buy it, Julie? It sounds like a good product, but it depends on the price. Well, now I have the same sort of problem again. Could you help me figure out how to convert Chinese currency to our currency? A nice gift. We've been invited to Lisa and Tom's wedding in August, so we need to get them a present. Do you have any ideas about what to buy them? I don't know. I'm not very good at buying gifts for people. What do you usually buy people for wedding gifts? I'd like to buy something that they have especially asked for. Most couples who are getting married go to several department stores and make a list of what they would like, and the stores put the list into a computer system. Then you can go and print out the list and choose something that they would like. Are Lisa and Tom registered somewhere? Yes, they are registered at two department stores. I've already printed out their list from one store. What have they asked for? Well, they have asked for different things for their new house. They would like towels, linens, decorations for the house, small appliances for the kitchen, china, silverware, crystal glasses, garden tools, and a patio set. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. How should we decide what to get them? They have listed a coffee maker as one of the things they want, so why don't we buy them a nice coffee maker? Okay. How much is it? It's $40. Maybe we could get them some nice coffee cups and some coffee to go with it. That's a great idea. I think that will make a lovely wedding present. Rock, paper, scissors. Come on, Tony. Let's go to a movie tonight. We went to a movie on Saturday, Mary but we haven't gone bowling for a long time. I know. Let's play rock, paper, scissors to decide. Rock, paper, scissors? It sounds like an interesting sort of game. 
How do you play it? First, we each make a fist with our right hand, and then we shake our fists at the same time. One, two, three. On the count of three, you can keep your hand in a fist. That's rock. Or open your hand with the palm flat. That's paper. Or keep your fist, but put out your first and middle fingers. That's scissors. The winner is the person who has the stronger item. That sounds stupid because rocks are stronger than paper and scissors, so the rock will win every time. That's true in real life, Tony, but that's not how it works in this game. Rock can break scissors, but rock can be covered by paper, and paper can be cut by scissors. So rock defeats scissors, paper beats rock, and scissors beats paper. It's interesting that each item in the game can defeat one other thing and lose to one other thing. I wonder who invented this game. I don't know, but it's played all over the world. There's even a rock, paper, scissors world championship that has been held every year in Europe since 1934.